I saw this in the World Economic Forum and I had to talk about it because it's such a clear indicator of the drastic shift in society, not that we're facing in the future and generally down the road, but that is actually happening right now. It's actually taking place. And if you like your doctor and want to keep him, you're going to love this. So this was on wefforum.org. That's the Davos site, the Davos Elite. And it was written by Ida Aachen, a member of parliament in Denmark. And I checked, and as far as I could find, she hasn't been to Bilderberg or anything like that. But again, she's a member of the Davos Elite. We are 7 billion people now on the planet. We're going up to 9 billion. Think about 3 billion people entering the middle class, all wanting cars, mobile phones, computers, eating meat. I mean, this is a huge pressure on the resources we have. But she appears to be what very much what I assume would be a Bernie Sanders style socialist. But she's also hoping that people in the near future will own nothing. That's their big answer to income inequality. They've been talking about it at these conferences for years. They've been talking about universal income, what to do when people can't work. And their answer is people of the future will own nothing. The Davos elite preparing for their annual confab next month have acknowledged the growing problem of the underman who's threatened by the rising cost of living, discouraged by the lack of better paying opportunities overall, and all the other factors that go into living in the society that we've been in. And the answer of the 1% and those even fewer who could be counted among the billionaires of the planet who own more than anyone else listed in the phone book, and their answer is that we should own nothing at all. And we talked a lot about the smart city, how much that's being used for control, but this goes beyond anything. It's straight into Marxist serfdom. Actually, without the problem of work and without the problem of the working man's struggle. So it's neo-feudalism, but with a new twist. Here's how it goes. Here's what Ida Aachen wrote in her column for Davos. Welcome to the year 2030. Welcome to my city, or should I say, our city. I don't own anything. I don't own a car. I don't own a house. I don't own any appliances or any clothes. I sound like I'm from a Dr. Seuss novel. It might seem odd to you, but it makes perfect sense for us in this city. Everything you considered a product has now become a service. We have access to transportation, accommodation, food, and all the things we need in our daily lives. One by one, these things became free, so it ended up not making sense for us to own much anymore. Why, why do you want to own your cell phone? I mean, you want, the, you want the function, you want the service, right? Why do you want to own a cell phone if you can just lease it? And if you lease, why, why shouldn't you lease your refrigerator or your washing machine or your dishwasher or why do you want to own it? I mean, it's not like the plastic in the middle is like, you, I own a, a broke dishwasher. I mean, wow. People don't own cars anymore. There's driverless vehicles and flying cars for longer journeys. I think we've had that one promised before. So why don't you want to go into a business model where the company owns it? Ida Aachen writes that in 2030 in our city, we don't pay any rent because someone else is using our free space whenever we don't need it. Someone else is sleeping in your living room when you're not around or cooking in your kitchen when you're done making dinner. She writes, my living room is being used for business meetings when I'm not there. And once in a while, I will choose to cook for myself. It's easy. Even the necessary kitchen equipment isn't owned. It's delivered to the door by drones within minutes. Environmental problems seem so far away, she says, because of course, it can never really be that far away from Agenda 21. She writes, the air is clean, the water is clean, and nobody would dare touch the protected areas of nature because they constitute such value to our well-being. No one is allowed to go into the wilderness, but in the cities, there's plenty of green space and plants and trees all over. She says that even shopping has changed. You don't really shop anymore. It's more of a choosing of things just to use and to borrow. And that she used to find it fun to actually pick things out for herself. But over time, she found the algorithm did it for her better and knows her own taste better than she does. And there's a flashback, of course, when AI and robots took over so much of our work. Your name is Mr. Machine. We suddenly had time to eat to sleep well, to spend time with people. Instead of working, there was thinking time, creative time, and development time. 
but for a time everything was just entertainment. She laments those who lost their way, who decided it was too much all this technology, those who felt obsolete and useless when robots and AI took over. It sounds like Davos watched our film, which by the way you can watch on Amazon Prime, and now they're writing about it and now it's really happening in the world that we live in. They say that people who got upset with the political system moved out and they live in basically 19th century villages with old technology. And basically they're not valued in society, but neither is anyone else. So that's the future society, but you don't own anything and... Do you know how much a car drives? How much of its life? 4%. Or if you take a drill, it's used 15 minutes. It's not a lot, is it? And most of us, we, I know there are some guys here that really love to own a drill. Um, but for the rest of us, we just want a hole in a wall, right? And, and I think we're going to a place where we just want mobility, where we don't care so much about owning a car. It's actually a little bit of trouble. If, we, if it just comes a driverless car and pick me up and, and I can drive around and this car will be driving all the time. Things could be taken away at a whim, but even this parliament member from Davos writes about the pitfalls. Once in a while, she writes, I get annoyed about the fact that I have no real privacy. Nowhere can I go and not be registered. I know that. I know somewhere everything I do, think, and dream of is recorded. And dream of is recorded. I hope that no one will use it against me. But she still insists that this is a way better society because in the old society, terrible things were happening. There were lifestyle diseases from couch potatoes and there was pollution and waste and climate change and congested cities and social unrest and unemployment and everything else that's part of life. So she says that's why the world of 2030 would be so much better if we own nothing and we were basically peons who don't even have to do work and really just have to hang out. Well, it sounds really cool for a feature length film or a theme park ride. And you're all like, yeah, wow, cool, man. I want my turn. That sounds pretty good. But after you go around the block once or twice, you think, I've seen this movie. It's 2001. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. It's Logan's Run, The Wizard of Oz, it's Rollerball, it's The Hunger Games, Gattaca 1984, Brave New World, Divergent, Soylent Green, etc. I've seen that movie. I've actually seen all those movies. And you realize one fatal flaw. What happens if they don't like what I say? And what happens if I don't like or believe in what they do anymore? What about my rights, man? There's no guarantee of freedom or absolute respect of rights, and you're just another basically head of cattle in the global management system, the biodiversity system, of which you count very little in the overall schemes. And you don't even have privacy in your own head when you sleep at night. There is no guarantee of freedom or absolute respect of rights at all, including privacy, and everything shifts according to what is already acceptable and what certain people wish to make acceptable. And it's always between those lines. And your rights mean nothing because your dreams were so unlimited that you'd fall for anything. We all love our stuff and free stuff is better. We take the ride and grumble as quietly as possible about the drawbacks and the back end shafting and raw deals that are constantly offered up. The theme park ride would become torture rather than entertainment if you were never allowed off of it. And basically, I think once reality kicked in, it might not be the best system. Because in this future system, which they're building, they're shifting people into it, and the internet's a huge part of it, there is no guarantee of freedom. They will censor you, they will shut down your channel, they will deauthorize your account, your bank card will not work. First of all, we all know these smart cities of the future will be highly technologically controlled grids where everything, including you, will be tracked and traced everywhere you go. Some people chuckle when you bring up Mark of the Beast, but there will be some kind of chip or digital tattoo or some kind of thing that will be required for you to move about in this city to travel, to engage in commerce, and just think about it. Right now we've already been upgraded to a chip system in our credit cards where we're getting used to seeing a chip every time we pay for something. Just follow that out to its logical conclusion. Davos, Bilderberg, George Soros, United Nations, all these other elites and foundations are really pursuing universal basic income, which essentially makes the government your boss and leaves you completely dependent on it for everything. And it's no joke to say that in a society like that, if you don't follow the rules, 
they can turn your access off like Sandra Bullock's life in the movie The Net. And those rules, by the way, might start out at an acceptable point that seems reasonable, but just consider all of the constraints they can put on you and yours and how you live your life in the interest of the public good in our collective city of 2030. Mandatory vaccinations, for example, and medical treatments. Your health, including mental, will be considered community property in a place like this. For two, the entire city will obviously be a gun-free zone. Or, you know, maybe they decide nobody's gonna eat red meat anymore except once a year on your birthday. You know, the United Nations came out and said that red meat's bad for you, so maybe they'll just make sure no one can even have that. You just don't even get access to it. Really, basically, just any rule they decide to make, if you're in this system and economically dependent upon it, you're giving yourself up to the whims of the collective. Maybe they outlaw homeschool. Or maybe they force everyone to get up and exercise at 8 a.m. every morning because it's good for you and because obesity is now considered a disease. And think about it, with Obamacare, they've already got everyone paying an individual shared responsibility payment if you don't buy their health insurance. The, the, there's no limit to the number of things that they will be able to control in a society where the majority of everyone owns nothing and is completely dependent on the government for everything that they do get. So how much more of a leap is it to say these kinds of things, right? Maybe they, you know, mandate some sort of antidepressant in the water, you know, for the good of society, keep everyone real happy and chilled out. Sounds loony, it sounds like Brave New World. Well, so did the suggestion of the future these people are creating right now once upon a time but they're talking about it like this is a real possibility that they're actually working towards. If you think about it, the younger generations have been socially engineered to live in this society, to not say anything that's gonna offend someone else because they might get triggered and everyone should have a safe space. These kids have been engineered not to buy houses, not to buy cars, not to get married, not to have families, and really not to be able to find their way out of a paper bag without Googling it first. They have become totally dependent on the internet and computers for the majority of their existence. I mean, back when we were kids, for example, we couldn't wait to turn 16 and get our driver's license because that meant freedom. But larger and larger portions of millennials are still living with their parents at age 30 now. They don't even know what freedom is anymore. They don't even have the same concept of freedom or privacy. Privacy doesn't even exist for these kids. They have always lived their lives sharing everything about themselves on the computer, filming themselves all the time and being filmed all the time and that's just normal to them. So the, the, the privacy concept is being quashed anyway. This is why Bilderberg asked a couple years back, does privacy exist? It was a rhetorical question because they know that privacy has already been extinct for a while. And these millennials have been engineered for this exact smart grid city where everything, right down to the trash can, will have sensors in it so the proper authorities can be alerted in real time if you don't recycle properly for the good of the planet. We've already shown you guys before in reports about the smart city. Everything in your house will be connected to the internet. It will be sending out signals in real time, data about everything you're doing in your house, what you're eating, how much energy you're using, water, I mean, just pretty much everything so that it can be tracked and monitored and they can make sure you stay within your quota. And if you turn up the air conditioning a little too high in the summer, they'll make sure and turn it down for you. You'll really have no control over your life at all. You will be part of this collective system. And the society these people are pushing us towards is a dystopic nightmare that's already happening in slow motion. You won't even be able to sleep at night in your own bed, because it won't be your bed, and have privacy in your own brain. So I guess count me as one of those poor saps that became obsolete and is living out in the wild like a crazy person in a tree or whatever. That's fine. Like hell I'm gonna live in this crazy ass society that they're suggesting. I can't even fathom it. It sounds insane. Car share for a long time was a problem because people left stuff in the cars and it's a little bit disgusting. But now, you know, you rate people, so you don't leave stuff in the car, you just behave better. So the information technology has made it much more easy to share things. 
And again, we talked about all this stuff, all these themes come up in our film Obsolete, which we're just trying to talk about this stuff. The end of the need to work for a living and the institution of the universal basic income concept. It sounds good and it makes sense in many regards. It sounds like a better system, but it is fundamentally flawed and therefore doomed. Can somebody pass me a roll of toilet paper and help me order uh, some kitchen materials? Maybe a breakfast bowl. Do you own your own underwear? You don't even own your own clothes.